I'm Stephanie Herzog with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you're watching the Video Voters Guide. We're here at Metro East Community Media to interview candidates for the 2016 general election. And I am talking today with Jeff Reardon, who is running for, uh, rerunning for state legislator for District 48. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here today. This is, this is fun. Great. So, um, so tell me about your experience. I know that you're an incumbent for this position. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm tell just, just finishing up my second term, running for the third, and I'm probably best known for uh, being Mr. CTE, and I, I, it's career technical education, because I'm a former shop teacher, and so I've really been advocating that everybody, every student that comes through should really be well prepared for career, whether that's you know apprenticeships or working in industry somewhere, going on to college, but whatever, get something that gets kids excited, and uh, so we've done we've done a lot. So in 2015, uh, we doubled the amount of funding for CTE. It's, it's still way insufficient, and that's why you're going to see Measure 98 coming up, which I think is a really important uh, measure. We want to pass that so uh, all kids can have a chance at being well prepared for careers, and. Uh, so that's my main focus. Great. Yeah. Tell me what area District 48 is. So District 48, I usually describe it as Lentz area down to Happy Valley. So okay. uh, it goes as far north as Powell. It goes down past Clackamas Town Center and so forth. But that's roughly the area. So okay. Mount Scott's in there. Great. So, so we have a few questions for you. Kay. If Measure 97 does not pass, how will you address the predicted budget shortfall, especially for education and social services, including homelessness and affordable housing? Well, I'm really, uh, really think the funding crisis should have been resolved by now. I think uh, I'm disappointed that people haven't come together uh, to do that work. Uh, so now um, it really appears that, that those conversations will have to happen after uh, November 8th. And I really do see, I've, t I've talked to people in government positions, electeds, I've talked to a lot of people in the business community, mm -hmm. and I think there's a commitment, there's a recognition on both sides that we need additional funding. We really do. Our, we've increased the uh, school's budget um, in 2015, but it's really still insufficient. The class sizes are too large, and there's a lot of counseling services that aren't happening. And, and, uh, and I mentioned the career aspect. So mm -hmm. um, I th think those needs are real. Obviously, uh, more and more seniors, the homelessness and ho housing, huge issues. Uh, and we need to address those. Um, so those conversations, uh, but uh, like I said, I think the commitment is there from both sides. But until we find out what's going to happen on the ballot measure, nobody wants to talk to each other. So it's kind of sad, really. Okay. Um, okay. What are your legislative priorities for improving gun safety? Um, I think in, in terms of gun safety, it seems like the, you know, the wait time uh, after background checks, I mean, that's, to me, that's like really easy. Just extend that and uh, uh, close that Charleston loophole. I guess that's the, the phrase that people like to use. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little more concerned about, you know, when and, and I think we need to have a, a more um, decided on, you know, the type of weapons that are sold. I, I really don't understand why anybody needs an assault rifle. Uh, mm -hmm. It's certainly not for hunting. Um, so, you know, I, I really um, I th think we could do without those. Um, mm -hmm. we, we didn't have them on Granddad's farm when we were out hunting for, <laughs> uh, so don't know why we have those. Mm -hmm. um, there is, there is something about an extreme risk protection. So if somebody's having some kind of a uh, mental health issue and, and maybe a family member or neighbor could call that in, um, I, that's been discussed quite at length. I think there was a bill last session, if I recall, that mm -hmm. talked about that. But it's something I think you have to also be extremely careful about. Um, I don't want my neighbors, you know, calling on me and then being called in, you know, not having some kind of a fair process that can mm -hmm. be followed to protect the rights of the individual. So it's a really uh, very touchy issue. But, uh, mm -hmm. and one thing I haven't heard anybody talk about is uh, perhaps be an idea of somehow incent people to have gun safes and gun locks. 
I, I don't know why uh, no one's brought that up, and maybe I need to, to do that. So. Okay, okay. How can the legislator ensure, legislature ensure there's adequate funds to address the transportation infrastructure? Well, there's an abundant number of ideas floating around, and I'm sure you've heard all of them. Obviously, um, a gas tax would be part, uh, raising uh, registration fees or another idea. I think one that is uh, we really need to go ahead and implement would be the alternative uh, mileage tax. So uh, allow uh, electric vehicles, like I must confess, my wife's driving a LEAF, doesn't pay any gas tax. Um, she really should be. So, um, uh, and that's that's been tested. We had, I think it was like 5,000 uh, people that uh, could have been tested over the last couple of years. And um, let's, let's just go ahead and implement that because we've lost so much revenue because the EVs aren't paying it. And mm -hmm. cars get a lot higher mileage these days too. So uh, we do need the additional revenue. So there's a number of ways to do it. Uh, my greatest concern really is not exactly how we raise it. We'll figure that out. Um, but I'm really more concerned about the decision-making process for projects. And I've been working with a group called Transportation for America and I have a bill that talks about uh, it will increase the rationale uh, of the decision-making process, the accountability, and the transparency of the process. Um, right now, it's just, um, you know, if you, unless you are a dedicated uh, transportation geek and spend countless hours on it, studying it, it's really hard to tell why a decision would be made. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm asking is people set the criteria first, weight the projects, and then figure out uh, the return on investment for each project. So you can have a quantifiable comparison of one project to the other, and then put that information up on the web. I think we deserve to see how these projects are, are weight, you know, weighted against each other. It shouldn't be done by uh, politicians elbowing each other in the back rooms or something. I'm not being fair to my, uh, but I'm being a little bit silly about that part. But um, if you look at the uh, STIP, the uh, State Transportation Planning book, you cannot tell why one project is in there versus another. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, we have projects like the Eddyville, which is like 20 miles, and it was $16 million uh, per mile. And it was way, many, many years longer to construct than it should have. That's just one example. So part of this bill would also be to right-size projects. Figure out, you know, what's, what do you really need to do uh, to solve the transportation problem and then design around that. So there's, um, obviously I'm kind of excited about this one. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but, you know, whatever we do, we need to make the best use of the money possible. Yeah. and people need to know how their money is being spent. So that's my goal. Okay. We just have a little bit of time. Yeah. Uh, how would you envision a statewide approach to homelessness and affordable housing? I want to, I want to, I can't talk about that one a little bit. Yeah. So what I do want to, what I do want to mention, one thing I am going to try to do is work for equity. Right now we've had tremendous job growth in the Portland area. Mm -hmm. But if you look at East County, east of 82nd, out into Gresham, where we're sitting today, the job, they've had a negative uh, job growth. And imagine that, but it's high concentrations of people of color, and uh, the incomes that they make is much less than in other areas. So I have uh, a bill that I'm going to be working on to try to uh, train up some people for jobs that are going to become available out in, in the Troutdale Industrial Park area. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. The general election is November 8th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote. Thank you very much.